What do you feel is the city's top infrastructure need and how should it be funded? One of our infrastructure needs, I believe, is one of the top ones right now is the resurfacing of our roads and the fixing of the potholes. During the budget meeting, we have dedicated two cents of the tax dollars to go towards that. We have had a lot of complaints, and on the survey that we got returned to us, that was one of the main complaints we had. The other one was the trash pickup, and no matter how much you pick up the trash up, people are going to complain because it's still going to be there. But our roads are getting in, in bad shape. With all the weather that we've had, with the freezing and the water getting under the pavement, we're having potholes. It needs to be fixed. We have dedicated two, two cents of every dollar going into that. And I believe that's one of our critical things right now. I'm going to have to piggyback what Joel said here. You know, we did a survey. We asked the citizens of Bristol, what are the needs that you want? And, and the question is not just what you want, but infrastructure needs. Brothers, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of things over the years, replacing a lot of sewer lines, water lines that, that have to be done. Uh, but the roads are the things that the citizens of Bristol, Tennessee said, you're not doing a good enough job. Uh, so that's one of the things we're increasing funding for that uh, during the next fiscal year starting in July. Uh, we uh, typically do the paving about five miles a year uh, within the city. We're going to up that to seven or eight miles during the next year. Uh, try to do a little bit better job on that. You know, these things, uh, everything that we do costs money. But as far as infrastructure, I think that's probably it. You know, BTS has got uh, uh, you know, the fastest internet in the state along with Chattanooga. Uh, we've got uh, pretty much everything uh, else that we need. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about economic growth. We're putting a lot of time and effort into the Exit 74 project uh, and building the additional infrastructure over there. Long term, I think our next big project is going to be working with Salton County to try to get a connector 81 11 over there around by the hospital over to 26 local highway most folks call it and then down through the heart and holler so we can get from south end of bristol the speedway area to our hospital and on we're going to have to figure out something there over the next few years and that's going to be working with Salt county and uh, any of our state folks in there help us with the state funding on that would you i agree that the roads are in need and just take it one step further is we have some real drainage issues in different parts of the city. I visited with a gentleman last evening down on Tennessee Avenue. Water is constantly standing there. He said that in the summer it's so bad that he, they can't go out because of the mosquitoes. Uh, the city came out and insisted there was a drain there. There's not a drain there and the water was standing last evening. There are other places in the city where we still have some drainage issues. Along and that, that piggybacks onto the whole situation with the roads because if areas aren't draining well, then that standing of water will, will deteriorate the roads. Along with that, is that we still have some infrastructure with uh, our water in some areas. We have a small business down on the volunteer parkway, and invariably, about every other year, the pipe breaks and they come in, our parking lot is flooded, and, and on it goes. So, we've still got some issues with uh, some of our piping. And uh, I think that uh, we do we do need to have a connection between Exit 74 past the hospital on out. Uh, talked with a local car dealer here that's down on the parkway, and you know this end of the volunteer parkway is absolutely stifled because we, we don't have any ready access. So the roads, the drainage, the piping system, and easy access—they're all all four on. If I understand this question correctly, and in infrastructure is a building, then I think the, the top thing on the list that comes to mind is uh, rebuilding the Stone Castle, which is unparalleled, and that's a process on the way with tailgating. But it should not just be a one-time event, it should just be a, a continued process to build a high school that is beyond where it is. It's, it's unparalleled. I wish I had access to something like that in Louisiana. I've been working my way up 11 cents. And then when, I, when you go to replace other buildings like I guess advanced building it on a Fairmont model. I think that we have to again 
uh, put all of our resources there because at the end of the day, we've already suggested that business is the big key, uh, education is the way to do it. If we're not proud of our structures, our edifices, we won't be proud of what we achieve within them. So if I understand the question, I'd work on those schools structurally. Uh, I, I would say that uh, we've talked about roads. The safety of our citizens on our roads, I think, is, is, is something we really need to, uh, to look at. Uh, if we're having traffic problems at certain times of the, of the day on Volunteer Parkway, I know we do, that needs to be, that needs to be fixed. Um, so road, pavement roads, I think we're on a pretty good track for that from what I've seen in our budgets. Um, utilities, uh, maybe in our neighborhood we've got water pipes busting quite often. I think we have finally uh, found, found the solution to that. Uh, so I feel like we're in pretty good shape. I think our city does a pretty good job on infrastructure when it comes to those type of things. I have heard of a rail system uh, that may be coming into uh, Bristol that could really cater to some of our industries. And I really believe that that could really be a catalyst for a lot of new industry in our industrial parks. Um, I know of one business that says that they can double their business if they get rail service. So I think that would be a, a, a critical step for us. If we can get some state funding, and even federal funding, to help that along, we would uh, certainly uh, like that. I'll echo what uh, Morgan said about uh, the Stone Castle uh, and facility upgrades. Uh, I have toured uh, all of our schools. Uh, we all, we're in fundraising. And so I'm in and out of schools quite often. Uh, I was in Vance Junior High School just two days ago. And I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but uh, there are some, uh, some structural problems there that we're going to have to address. That school is going to need to be built sooner rather than later. Uh, and I don't think we can afford I think there's more risk in us waiting to build that school uh, in a couple of years past, uh, past our plans. So I would echo those about their schools. Thank you. Um, I don't think anybody's talked about how to pay for these. That's the other part of the question, right? It was how, could you repeat the question? Don't count my time. See to sure. money also. What do you feel is the city's top infrastructure need and how should it be funded? Thank you. Um, roads, obviously, and that's three cents of the proposed tax increase is to be able to do more with our roads and timing is of essence because asphalt goes up every day and we're behind. Water lines, sewer lines, we have annual goals that, that are prepared and we go through as city council and water lines are on that on the regular. We're behind just like millions of hundreds of communities and cities around our country. Infrastructure has gotten way behind. Um, and the sewer lines, we have an agreement with Sullivan County for expanding some of those. Um, but I would agree with the schools that that is what we need to be working on. Um, in Vance, I was hoping we would actually do it when we did Fairmount because it looks like the junior high school that I went to in Louisiana. I want to talk to you. <laughs> anyway, um, but how do we pay for this? So we've got a three cent tax this year to get some more roads paved if we, if we do pass that. For the schools, I wish that we had had the model. In the past at some work sessions, we've had an Excel model that models if we raise our taxes four cents this year, what happens if we wait and do a two cents this year and two cents next year, what happens? Also, what happens with our debt? That, and the advantage of waiting another couple of years, and I agree we can't, but the advantage is our debt drops way off, so the we don't have to depend on a tax increase to build the school, or not as high a tax increase. So um, we've gone to borrow money for a fair amount, and that's getting closer to being paid off, those bonds, and then we're in a better position to do bans. As a community, we get a third of what on property tax, we get a third of what Kingsport and Sullivan County get. We're half the size, but we only get a third. Thank you. I agree that uh, there, there's two aspects of the, of the resurfacing, and, and part of that is prevent. Part of it is prevented, but the uh, 
what was mentioned about the, the money is going for the resurfacing specifically. Fortunately, there's some planning at hand where they're going in and they're taking care of some of these galvanized pipes that have just worn out. They're causing a loss of efficiency in our systems. We get those replaced in the water lines. You see less water coming up out of the, the pavement here and there. And uh, those roads will last longer once the pipes are fixed and then we come in and resurface. Um, I think it's just to give you a perspective to uh, we, we talk about pennies, but uh, one penny of property tax is approximately $61,000, just to give you perspective. So um, that's a lot of asphalt. It's not two cents worth. It's, uh, it's or three cents, it's, you know, 120 some or 180,000 approximately. So we're talking about a good bit more there. I think it's important that we make sure that our, our areas are presentable. Uh, one thing that I, some of it I don't understand completely, but I know that we haven't paved our alleys in uh, some of the areas before, and that was one of the things brought up. I'd rather put that on some of our main streets. Uh, and then also, secondly, uh, with the school. I, traditionally, we've used bonds, but I think Vance is at a, at a point that we do need to get some work moving on that. Uh, we've, we've not started much. I've heard some pretty astounding price tags, but we, we haven't even gotten all of the things together yet. So the city needs to work with the school for that. Yeah, I think our, our roads is, that is one thing that we do need to take care of in the water lines, but going back to the school, uh, there is something, something has to be done with Vance. Uh, we all know that. Uh, as far as paying for it, I guess it comes back to, of looking back of all of the property taxes that increases that we have had over the years, we're right now from BTES, from say five, six years ago, we were getting $200,000 receiving $1.9 million from BTS this year as our portion of <clears throat> where is that money? Why are we not using part of that to put back for advance? We've known for quite some time that that needs to be done and um, I really I think that's that's one of the main infrastructures right now that we 